Alright, today I've got a little bit of a different project. I'm going to be making some custom dice trays for relatively cheap, and I just thought I'd uh, document the process. I've already got this one dice tray here. I use it, made this for Destiny. Um, works pretty well for Destiny, although for what I want, I need a little bit smaller one. I want to be doing some bat reps for Armada and maybe uh, Legion when it comes out, and I want to be able to have a uh, camera pointed right at the dice tray in order to get um, pictures of the dice on each roll and this one's gonna be a little bit big for that and cumbersome I want something a little bit smaller and more confined so we're gonna make um, actually a couple of uh, smaller ones so in order to do that we need a few things Put this one in the back All right so I have a couple of these window boxes. I actually I got a couple because um, I went to the craft store to get them and they were actually on sale two for one so I got two of them. I was actually gonna go and get a cheaper version but actually with the sale on this one it was worth it and I'll have two for either I can give one away or um, use different ones for different things that kind of a thing. Got a white and a black one so you need so these are um, window shadow boxes. They do have a glass front. We'll talk about that. We do need to get the glass out of there. Um, we're going to be modifying these a little bit. We need um, some sort of feet on them so that they don't damage any tables that we're working, that we're playing on. And then we just need some fabric. So I've got a couple of different patterned fa fabrics here. Just get these at the fabric stores. Um, they're, yeah, it's not terribly expensive and you don't have to get a lot of fabric. I got a little bit more than I needed just because I like to have a little bit extra in case I want to, um, do something else with it. I've also got this, um, adhesive spray, basically glue. There's not going to be any sewing or anything. We're just going to use some adhesive spray here. And then just a few tools. We're going to need a screwdriver. Um, potentially we're going to need some needle nose pliers and a hammer. Um, this is all based on what I needed to make this one. These dice trays are um, the same manufacturer as this one, um, but the, there might be something a little bit different about them that is going to require some different tools. But based on what I've got, that's what I had. So I'm going to I'm going to be making two of these at a time, and I will be showing you probably this one, but I'll show you progress on the other one as well. So these, get this opened up. I'll show you, these are meant to hang in the wall. So we've got this hanger here. So that's one of the things we're going to need the screwdriver for. So right away we're going to just take this take this off. And you can either throw away or keep this for something else if you think you might need it as a hanger. Then I'm just going to go around and make sure that all of these ones are tightened up so that they're in as far as we can get them. I may do this again. This um, this box is made out of wood. Um, there are plastic ones. Sorry about the vehicles going in the background there. There are plastic ones, but I do like the little bit um, more 
sturdy feel of these. They're a little bit heavier. So you have to move all these tabs to get out of the way and you can take out the back. So th this one here actually comes with this, you know, take out the pins here. So we don't need this. So cheaper ones don't have this one, but this one actually has this um, kind of foam board on it, which is gonna, it's not gonna impede our dice at all, but it is gonna give them a little bit softer landing spot um, help cushion them a little bit, keep them from scratching a little bit. So I do like this. I'm going to leave that just the way it is. And then we've got our tray with our glass. Now the one thing I needed to look at here, and it looks like it's made the same way as the other one was. So they actually put this glass in and then hold it in with these pieces of wood on the side after they've placed the glass in there. So there is no way for us to get this glass out of there um, in one piece, hence the hammer. Now I'm not gonna do this here. Um, we're gonna take a break here. I'm gonna set back up. I'll show you how I deal with this glass. We wanna deal with it safely. Um, this is a great project to have your kids help you with, um, but we don't want our kids breaking the glass but I'm gonna show you how to do that safely so we'll set set back up and we'll be right back okay now we're gonna get this glass out of here so I've got some heavy protective gloves I've got a just a used grocery bag a hammer and my needle nose pliers this is the one step. This is not for kids. Mom and dad, you guys take care of this. Um, everything else your kids should be able to help you with on this project. But I'm going to put on these heavy gloves. Now you have to be careful, obviously, with this glass. I like to put it into the grocery bag to contain as much as glass as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to just slice right through this bag, so you still have to be careful. But hopefully this is going to contain it, keep most of it off of my garage floor. I tend to be a little bit timid. Make sure that you're going right in the center. You don't want to hit your frame. And... Alright, that did it. Okay, and then we just want to be careful. Obviously, you're going to have shards of glass everywhere. Shake out as much. Actually, just shaking it out actually got it all out. It's all in the bag there. So I'm not going to need my needle nose pliers for this one. Um, if I had little pieces of glass stuck in the corners there, I would have gotten that out. But I was able to do that without actually touching any of the glass. It's now contained in the bag and I will dispose of that safely later. But now we have our frame. Okay, for the next step, so we've got our frame, no glass, got the backer. I'm gonna use those four pins that I actually took out of the backer in order to temporarily hold on my fabric so I can get it positioned right. I'm going to use this uh, kind of cool uh, Stormtrooper fabric that I found. Now this Stormtrooper, this box is approximately 6x6. Six six. The Stormtrooper's head is approximately 6x6. Six six. We may just cut off a tiny bit on the corners, um, but we'll see what we can do to make it fit. So I'm going to get this out of the way for now. And we're going to take our fabric and we want to try and find a piece that is relatively close to an edge. So 
So I guess we'll go with this this one right here. We do want to make sure that we have extra all the way around. I'm going to... Because really, for something like this, I suppose you could use some of this for just, um, you know, a non-themed type dice tray if you wanted to. But any dice trays, you're going to probably want the Stormtrooper head from this one. So these ones down here are all cut anyways. So we're just going to be pretty liberal with our cutting for now. Cuts don't have to be super straight on this. You just want to get enough extra that you're going to be able to get the entire head where you want it. Keep that fabric later. There's our base for our dice tray. Bring back this. So now we just want to get the best fit we possibly can on this. So we can test fit it a little bit. So. And right now, we don't need to be perfect on this. We just want to get it approximately where we want it. I don't want to overlap the top of the head very much. Definitely think we're going to lose just a tiny bit in the corners. And we can test that by just doing a dry fit in here. So, as you can see, we're going to lose just a little bit here and down here and at the top if we do it straight. I was wondering if we did it. So that's another option. We can try that. Either way, this isn't a perfect fit for this box, but I like the pattern and I wanted to give it a try. I think the other one with the Millennium Falcon, which we'll see at the end here, is going to fit quite a bit. Um, cleaner than this one. So here we go. Alright, so that's going to require a slight adjustment. Okay, so we can do this as well. Just gonna lose just a tiny bit of the corners, so it just kind of depends. It actually um, frames pretty well that way. I might.
go that way. Um, we do lose a tiny bit on the corners and a tiny bit in the top of the head. And I can adjust this a little bit more when we go for the final attachment, but I think I like that orientation a little bit more. So I think that's what we're going to go with. So we now have our rough piece of fabric. I didn't end up using my pins. Now what we do want to do here. And I got a little bit lucky. I wasn't expecting to go with that orientation, but we do have enough on the edges here for this. And this is going to fold over pretty well. We're going to... I don't need that much fabric on the bottom folded over, so we're going to just crop off some of this. Plus this corner doesn't exactly fold in the way that we want. So I might just use my pins here. I just realized I have this dot here. This dot should be centered right above that. So I'm going to use that to get it right on the corner of my box. And I've got another circle down here that I can actually do the same. So this is going to work out well, I hope. Those two lined up right on the corners. Alright, I think that it's going to work well. We're going to just take these pins for a little, just to temporarily secure this so we can trim up our fabric a little bit. Okay, so now we want to go to the back. We don't need a ton of fabric. The first thing I want to do, these corners come right up to the edges. These, the top and the bottom corner, I'm going to cut right up to the corner. On both the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to cut these, the extra fabric here a little bit. I want about an inch of fabric to fold over. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then this piece of fabric isn't going to go on anything, so I'll just make a little bit of a trapezoid here on each end. Okay, so that should be just enough fabric to wrap around on all four sides. Keeps our 
pattern right in the middle. And so now, again, we don't want to do this inside. We want to do this in a well-ventilated area. We're going to use some of this adhesive spray, um, essentially glue. It's um, it's made for doing all kinds of materials, but it's excellent with fabric. That's how I attach the one for the the larger dice tray in the back here. Now we, I am going to be a little bit more careful with this one. So I'm going to mask off the back of this, um, and then we're going to go and spray this downstairs. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna, I want to mask off the back of this so that when I spray my adhesive spray, I don't get it all over the back. I didn't do that for this one, <laughs> and the back of it got really sticky. It's still actually a little bit on the tacky side. I really don't like that, so I don't want to repeat that mistake. So I'm going to cut this. I'm just using the piece of paper that was in there. tape is rather thick. Then we're just going to use some um, painter's tape. I need to make sure that I've got enough space to fold over the fabric, but I don't want a lot of extra. I, I want as little space between the tape and where the fabric is going to fold over as possible. Okay, so that should be good enough. So now we're going to go back into the garage to do our adhesive spray. All right, we're now gonna take and adhere our fabric to our backer here. In order to do that, what I've decided to do, I'm gonna leave two of these pins in and take two of the pins out so that I don't lose my orientation on the backer. I want to keep that. And I should be able to fold this over. I'll adhere this. We'll stick it on. And then we'll fold it back, take the other two pins out. Ad adhere the other bit. And then we'll, we're going to flip it over and do the edges. So with this, um, uh, similar to spray paint, not exactly though. You do want to give it a decent shake before you, um, you use it. It's not like spray paint doesn't have the marble in it. Now, this is very sticky. You probably want to be careful with it. I, um, probably, probably another job for the parents out there to do. Hopefully the nozzle isn't too gunked up. I've also put this um, cardboard bo box down just to keep the fabric relatively clean. And we're going to work through this not super quick. It's a little forgiving, but we don't want to waste too much time. Just 
quite sticky. All right, and we're going to take the other two pins out. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated room. It smells a little bit like uh, uh, model glue. That's what it smells like. Old testers model glue. Probably not the best thing to be inhaling too much of. box is very sticky. Obviously a pizza box. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, just have a couple of things to finish it up. We're gonna finish up our dice tray now. So, just in the reverse, we're gonna take this. We gotta take off our um, protect our masking here. At least that way, this isn't sticky at all. Unfortunately, this one's a square, so it doesn't really matter which orientation we put it in. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, and then um, I'm just gonna take these cork um, cork pads. Just get these at a hardware store. Nice thing about this project, that all the materials I used are very easy to get. No complicated tools or anything. I got the the frames at a craft store. Um, I said I got them at. It was a two for one deal. Usually they're twelve dollars each. It um, so I got two for twelve. Um, you can get cheaper plastic ones for less. Although I do like the weight and feel of these a little bit more. Um, the fabric I got from a local fabric store. They have all kinds. So if you're not into Star Wars, you can um, go with um, you know superheroes or. Um, any, almost any subject that you can think of, Star Trek, Doctor Who, just about anything. Um, so there's that dice tray. And just do the whirl. And there you go. And as usual, I'm rolling a lot of blanks. Pretty typical for me. Um, again, I did this mostly because I would, I want to have a camera facing down onto the dice tray. So that when I do a bat rep, I'll have pictures of all the dice rolls. Um, I did, while I was doing this one, I was showing you that one, but I also did Millennium Falcon one. Which, this pattern fit perfectly inside the box. It was pretty much an exact match um, for everything. So this one was a, a nice match. Again, um, good Star Wars theme. Most of these frames do just come in black or white. There are a few other colors in different sizes. Um, although, in this size, I only saw um, 
black and white. Um, so again, the fabric from a fabric store. Sometimes you can get the fabric on sale if it's an older pattern. Um, you don't have to buy a full yard of fa fabric. You can buy it, I think you can buy it by the inch, which you're not going to want to. You can buy it by the foot. Whatever um, amount you buy, though, make sure that you have the, um, you know, whatever it is that you want to display in the dice box to have a full pattern there. So if you get six inches and you end up getting three inches of the top and three inches of the bottom in another spot, that's not going to do, do you any good. Just make sure they cut it where you get your full, um, whatever image it is that you want to display along with some extra along the sides. Um, and then just purchase that and you can get it for quite a bit cheaper. Um, this spray glue I got at the um, same craft store that I got um, the frames at. Um, and, I, and like I said, the cork feet, I just got at a hard, hardware store. They're really cheap. Um, and you get end up with way more of them than you'll ever, well, not ever, but way more of them than you need for, for one. So you can use them for other things. Or if you make more dice trays, you can do that. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention, one reason why I made two of these for Armada, a lot of times, or sometimes what happens is, um, say my friend will roll, roll in, and he usually rolls way better than me, just like this roll was. Um, and say he has a re-roll, he has, or I, occasionally will re-roll it into the other dice like that and end up knocking one of the dice and potentially flipping it, which you don't want to do. You want to maintain the integrity of these dice. So if I have two dice trays and he needs to do a re-roll um, or needs to adjust the dice in any way, he can take it and then re-roll the extra dice into the other dice tray and again get an incredible result um, because it's against me. And um, in that way, you're maintaining the integrity of your original roll, and you're getting your re-rolls in a separate tray. Um, if you have somebody that's crazy on dice manipulation, you have one to maintain your dice, so he's re-rolled this one, and maybe he got blacks in these, and he has ordinance experts, and he's going to re-roll those into this dice tray, and then just keep moving them over and maintaining the integrity of the dice so that you're not crashing into your other dice and flipping them like I did with this one. Um, so that's it. It's a really simple project. Great for the kids. Sometimes kids have a hard time keeping the dice on the table. So if you're playing Monopoly or, um, you know, another game with dice, this is a great way to keep the dice on the table. Um, and in reach of everybody. Everyone knows where the dice are. Um, highly, highly recommend it if you have little kids or if you're just a big kid and you can't keep control of your own dice. Um, so thank you very much. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I plan to have more, um, a lot more content soon. Um, and click the bell for alerts so that you know when I've uploaded something new. So thank you very much.